Hi, welcome to the Kinta. And today I'd like to talk a tiny little bit about carbon capture technology. It's really hard to say. We've got an enormous amount of water coming down the mountain. This tank still needs filling up, or rather digging out. And the one that we restored last summer is down over there. And apparently all the aquifers are now nice and full. So that's brilliant. Right, I'm going to uh, come down here and uh, I've got some trees to plant. So this is a stave of elder that uh, a friend gave me and actually I've got a, quite a few to put in and he tells me that all I need to do is to shove it into the ground and it's going to grow. So let's test that hypothesis. We'll see whether this turns into a beautiful tree. And just down there, which I'll show you in a minute, we've got a terrace which is absolutely sodden. And there's always water th flowing through it. So these water-loving plants should thrive. And uh, if you've never tried elderflower cordial, then it's definitely something that you should have a go at. So theoretically, that should do it. And I will come back and show you how it gets on, assuming it actually does something. Wow. It's a pretty good stick anyway. We've got an absolutely beautiful breeze coming through. Um, you can probably hear it in the background, I'm afraid. At some stage, I do need to do something about some decent microphones. And uh, although it's still February, Pretty soon, I'm going to have to take my jersey off. It's really warm. So I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, carbon capture technology and why is it even a thing? Well, let's first of all look at what carbon capture technology is. Um, either you have a chimney and you put a scrubber on it and it separates out the uh, carbon dioxide from other inert gases and uh, then it's compressed and stored in caverns or you create a large uh, device, a plant of some description, um, a mechanical plant to extract directly from the air the carbon dioxide and then you compress it um, and you store it in caverns. As you uh, almost certainly will be aware um, carbon dioxide doesn't really have a liquid state, it goes straight from a solid to a gas and um, I'm assuming that it's uh, in the solid state when it's shoved underground. Now why do these things even exist? I can sort of get the idea why you would want to um, scrub a chimney uh, so that you are li literally not giving out any pollution at all but sucking it out of the atmosphere using a very expensive plant. I'm not sure that we don't already have something that does the job better. Trees. So why are people investing in this technology and not planting trees? I think uh, since childhood, I've been told that they are cutting down the Amazon rainforests in multiples of whales per year. You know, the country, not the uh, wonderful animal. 
and uh, of course it's uh, then given over to slash and burn uh, agriculture which not only reduces the fertility of the soil and puts a hell of a lot of uh, stuff into the atmosphere but it also degrades the area so much that uh, it can't be used after a while nothing will grow it becomes a wasteland and that's not great for the environment but why aren't we planting trees um, you've seen that we have planted a few trees there's a link up there if you haven't well I think that it comes to the question of uh, the return on capital specifically how fast do you actually get a return on your capital if you grow a tree as a absolutely sure you're aware it's going to take 50 100 more years to grow even if I was to plant this completely out with uh, trees I would be unlikely to have a saleable product uh, whether it's timber firewood whatever um, in my lifetime I'd be doing it for the next generation and I think historically that's probably where people have gone and what they've done So we need to examine why would you have a mechanical tree doing the same job except it's not actually producing a useful product, it's just taking the gas out of the air. Well I think it comes down to one simple factor and that is cash and specifically subsidies because you can receive general, you know, generous subsidies for investing in uh, green technology and the question that then needs to be posed is this technology entirely reliant on subsidy because if it was self-supporting people would be doing it anyway are people pocketing the money from the subsidies and making what could loosely be called a quick buck rather than thinking long term and doing what we're about to do and plant trees. So I always like to dig a nice deep hole and I'm planting a new tree and this one is already filling up with water so I've got to be relatively quick but walnuts like water and uh, they should be fine on this little terrace. They'll be shielded from the hottest part of the uh, day's sun. So there we go, a delightful little tree planted. My own little carbon capture device. Actually managed to say it that time. And that should be growing and absorbing carbon for very, very many years to come. And with any luck, It'll be here long after I'm not. There's so much water running down, not just from this little uh, stream, this little brook behind me but also from the tank that I installed a fairly rudimentary swale. A swale of course is just a ditch on contour and um, the idea behind that was to make sure that this whole terrace is really well imbibed, sucked up as much water as it possibly can. That's of course very good for plant growth but it's also very good for another thing and uh, you'll have heard me talk about it quite a lot and that is fire because well irrigated land does not have such a problem with fire if it's bone dry of course it's just going to rip through it straight away whereas I did observe that even after the wildfires that we had the uh, neighbourhood up the way where they constantly have sprinklers on survived untouched so I guess a question that I'd like to ask is whether a business model that is predicated on, that relies on subsidy, is something that could be held to be sustainable. 
we do see that uh, government projects almost always come with a very hefty price tag and incentives. So we really should perhaps be asking the government, is the model that you are trying to sell us here one that is sustainable or one that is enriching your friends? So I've got my other elder sticks here and I'm just going to shove one in here. Beautiful wet patch for it to uh, grow in. I think this will do. Now it shouldn't be too wet for it. I've seen them literally growing in the middle of streams before, which is lucky because I'm going to plant a few down here. So I'm not trying to be flippant when I pose the question uh, about carbon capture technology. I honestly do want to hear what you think. Should we be planting trees? And if you've done it yourself, let me know. Um, should we be doing both? Is it worth the investment? in the green technology because it will mean jobs and certainly in the short term. What about the long term? Do we think that storing CO2 in caverns underground is a sustainable way forward? I suppose we're talking about old mines and uh, other such things. Maybe we're just paying it back. So in my video the other day, I uh, touched on um, how cows are actually not as bad for the environment as you might think, or words to the effect. Um, I'm sure you probably are aware that cows have a different system of digestion than we do. Um, we have basically acid that breaks everything down and off it goes. We've got a fairly simple gut by comparison. Ruminants actually use bacteria to uh, break down the, uh, the food, the cellulose, that we cannot digest, which is found in grass, which of course we think of as, they, um, as being their main food. Well, I saw this video from this uh, chap. He he's obviously knows his stuff. He's a farmer, a beef farmer. And he was actually explaining that if you have 10 molecules of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. When you take those 10 molecules and you put it into grass, and this is the carbon cycle in action, you put those 10 molecules into grass, the cow eats the grass. The cow of course is breathing and it's going to be breathing out one two molecules it's going to be putting into cow into beef into building itself up making its body work and the other seven it's actually going to burp out and this is where we're told that it is a massive environmental problem and why I'm mentioning it here uh, is because it comes in time scales tree plant a tree 50 100 years you've got a tree. Cow maybe lives 
five, seven, ten years. But what it burps out, it's not carbon dioxide, it's actually methane. And methane is a, uh, a gas which is reputed to be uh, much more powerful in its greenhouse effect. But methane breaks down over the course of the next seven years into carbon dioxide. So those 10 molecules that were taken out of the air, put into the grass, put into the cow, burped and farted and everything out by the cow, after seven years, the cycle is complete. It's back in the air. It can be reabsorbed by the plants and it can be eaten by another cow. Just some food for thought. As ever, thank you very much indeed for watching. Thank you for listening to my rants. Um, put your comments down below. I think in this uh, rather crazy world, whether you agree with me or not, we must continue to find common ground. We must agree that we don't know everything. And uh, with that thought, have an excellent day, whatever you're doing.